Welcome to Cake Desktop's tutorial. Today, I will be teaching you how to set up templates and account categories. First, log into Cake Desktop. Before doing anything, I would like to give you an overview of my facility types of hours of care and tuition. Keep in mind that my facility's hours of operation is not the same as my hours of care. My facility's hours of operation is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Fridays. Next is my hours of care. My first hours of care template will be for full-time children that can receive care from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Fridays. So, any full-time child can come to my child care facility from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Fridays, to receive care. Now we will move on to tuition for those full-time children. For full-time infants ranging from 0 months to 11 months, I will charge $120 a week. For full-time toddlers ranging from 1-year-olds to 2-year-olds, I will charge $100 a week. For full-time preschoolers ranging from 3-year-olds to 4-year-olds, I would charge $90 a week. And for full-time school-age kids ranging from 5-year-olds to 12-year-olds, I would charge $80 a week. One thing to note is that for this example, my billing cycle is every Friday of every week. However, when you are enrolling a child into Cake Desktop under the Account tab, you can choose your own billing cycle to be either daily, every certain day of every week, or two weeks. You can also choose the billing cycle to occur twice a month or once a month. To give you more flexibility with your billing arrangements, each child will have their own billing cycle. So in our case, a full-time 8-year-old will be billed $80 to his family's account every Friday. A very important thing to remember is that Cake Desktop only allows inputs of the age of children in months. The reason for this is so that it is easier for Cake Desktop to quantify and comprehend. So we will have to convert the years listed here to months. So looking at the first row we have infants, and as you can see it is already in months so we don't have to make any changes. However in the second row we have full time toddlers from ages 1 year old to 2 year old. So just multiply the years by 12 to get your months. So 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 12 is 24. Now we will have full-time toddlers from 12 months to 24 months. In the next row, we have full-time preschoolers from the ages of 3-year-olds to 4-year-olds. Same as before, just multiply the years by 12 to get the months. So, 3 times 12 is 36, and 4 times 12 is 48. Next is the full-time school-age kids from 5-year-olds to 12-year-olds. 5 times 12 is 60 and 12 times 12 is 144. But wait, we have a problem. If you look carefully at the full-time toddler's age range, it ends at 24 months and the preschooler's age begins at 36 months. It seems we have an 11 month gap between the two age groups that is not accounted for. To address this 11 month difference in age group, let's go back to the full-time toddler's row. The math we did was correct, so why do we have this gap? Well, to understand this problem, let me ask you a question. If a toddler just turned 2 years old and her birthday was in January, is she going to be 2 years old for that month only? The answer is no. She will be 2 years old all the way through till her next birthday in January when she will turn 3 years old. So we will have to add the missing 11 months to the total number of months, which is 24, to make it 35 months. And as you can see, there is no longer a missing gap in months. So please be careful when converting the age from years to months, and be sure the age range add up. Continuing on with our conversion, we are coming across the same problem here for preschoolers with their age ending at 48 months and their school age kids beginning at 60 months. Again, by adding 11 months to the 48, we have 59 months, and now the gap is filled. For the school age kids, we will have to add 11 months to 144 to make 155 months. Now, our age range is completely connected with no gaps involved. This is the trickiest part, but once you understand this concept, it is a piece of cake. Now we will proceed to filling in this data we have here into Cake Desktop. Go to Configuration, then click on Templates, then Hours of Care. 
Here is your general template for your hours of care. Click the add button and up here is where you will fill in the name of your hours of care. I will call this one full time hours. Click the add button below. Now click on the drop down menu. Here are my days and hours of operation. You can change your child care's facility hours of operation under facilities data. As you can see, I cannot pick Sunday or Saturday because my facility will not be open on those days. Let's add the rest of the week. Next, we will add the times. So, full-time children's care begin at 6 a.m. and last all the way to 6 p.m. Remember, you can copy and paste the hours in one time slot to every other time slot by using Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste. Do the same for the next column over. Now we are finished adding our first hours of care template. Let's move on to creating our tuition template for full-time children. This will be where we will add our tuition for full-time children. Click the add button and fill out the name of this template, which I will call full-time tuition. Next, click the add button below. And here in this first and second column is where you will put the child's age range in months. So let's proceed to putting in the full-time infants. So in the first box, we will put one month and in the second one, we will put 11 months. The next column over is where you can post the rate or tuition for that age range. So in our case, full-time infants between the ages of 1 month and 11 months will be charged $120. Here is the description column where you must add a description to the tuition. It is very important that you fill in this description because this is what will appear on the family's billing statement so they are aware of what they are getting charged for. So, if a family has an infant enrolled in our full-time hours of care, they will be charged $120 every week. And they will be able to see on their billing statements that the amount came from full-time tuition. Click the Add button again and let's fill out the full-time toddler's tuition. 12 months to 35 months for $100. And again for full-time preschoolers 36 months to 59 months for $90. And lastly, for school age kids, between 60 months and 155 months is $80. Now we are finished setting up the full-time tuition template. As you can see, this is very straightforward, but careful calculations may be required. Of course, full-time is not my only hours of care and tuition rates. I have several others such as part-time and after school. Now that we know how to transfer the hours of care and tuition into Cake Desktop, let's add a few more. So for my part-time children, they would come in for half a day from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. Monday through Fridays. And my rates for part-time children is half of that of full-time children. Lastly, I have after-school children which their hours of care is from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Thursdays. But on Fridays, after-school children will be coming in from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. This is because every Friday is a half day for the public schools. And since there are only after school children, it is not necessary to add the rates of the other age groups. And so the cost of after school children is $35 a child. Now that we have this information, let's transfer all of this into Cake Desktop. So once again, go to the Hours of Care template and click on the Add button below. Enter the name of the template part-time and set the hours of care. So we will have Monday through Fridays from 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. Since we are here, let's go ahead and add the after-school children's hours of care too. Click the add button and enter the name, after school. Now let's set the hours of care. The hours of care from Monday through Thursdays is from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And for Fridays only is 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now we will move on to the tuitions template. Click the add button and set the name and let's begin adding rates. So for part-time tuition, let's add the age range, prices, 
and then most importantly add a description that will appear in the parent's billing statement next to the amount owed. We are now done with this template. As you can see, everything is similar to the full times template, but the prices are cut in half and that the description is labeled part-time tuition. Let's add the last tuition, naming it after school tuition, then click the add button. Since this template is specific to only one age group, you only have to add one row. Fill out the age range, the amount, and the description. As you can see, if a child is enrolled in this tuition, he will be billed $35 to his family's account. And the family can see on their billing statement that their $35 came from after school tuition. This task seems tedious at first, but you only have to set this up once. All of these templates make more sense once we start enrolling children into Cake Desktop, which will be covered in our Cake Desktop accounting video tutorial. Now we will look at the early drop off fees and late pickup fees. The reason we have these fees is because if a parent drops off or pick up their child outside their assigned hours of care, it may conflict with the staff's schedule and disrupt the classroom's ratio. Here you can issue fees for early drop off. So let's say a child is enrolled in a full time hours of care from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can set it to where if a child was dropped off at 5.50 a.m which is 10 minutes earlier, they can be charged an additional $5 to their account. So let's add a template. Click the add button, then set a name for the template. For now, we will just call it normal rates. And down below here is where you will set the time range and the amount. Click the add button, and as you can see, the first two columns is where you will put the time range in. So for dropping off a child earlier from one to five minutes, I can post a fee. But one to five minutes earlier is not that big of a deal. However, from six minutes to 15 minutes, I can post a fee of $10. And from 16 minutes to 30 minutes, I can post a fee of $20. And the last column here is the description. And what you put here will appear on the parent's billing statement. So for the first one, I will put no fee. However, for dropping off their child earlier from six to 15 minutes, I will charge $10. So there, in the description, I would put early drop-off fee. But for dropping your child off earlier from 16 minutes to 30 minutes, I would bill $20. And in the description, I would put very early drop-off fee. Everything that I have explained in the early drop-off fee template also applies to the late pickup fee templates. So if a child that is enrolled in an hour of care from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., then the child is supposed to be picked up by 6 p.m. the latest. If they are clocked out later from 1 to 5 minutes, I could charge $10 to their account. And if they are clocked out 6 to 15 minutes later, I would charge an additional $25 to their account. And from 16 minutes to 30 minutes, I would charge $35. All of the early drop off and late pickup fees will be posted for you automatically the moment the child is clocked in or out of Cake Desktop. Understanding how these templates work will help guide you to set up your child's profile faster and more accurately. Next, we will move on to the account categories. Go to the configuration, account categories, then account receivables. The importance of this tab is that these are the names of the charges that can be billed to the account. Such charges include tuition, transfer payments, fees, or pretty much anything else. As you can see, we have given you a default of two account receivables, tuition and transfer payments. So when you would like to post a specific tuition amount to a family's account, you can use this as the account receivable. Transfer payments are account receivables that will only be used when you start using Cake Desktop. So when you are transferring all of your family's account into Cake Desktop, they would most likely already have a balance that needs to be paid. For example, if a family that I am transferring into my Cake Desktop currently owes me $200, I will go ahead and post $200 to their account and label it as transfer payments. Other examples of account receivables are registration fees for enrolling a child into your child care facility, and you can add it to their next payment. So let us create this account receivable. Click the Add button and simply name it. 
In this case, I would put registration fee. Let's add a few more as an example. If a group of children will be attending a field trip, you can add the fee to their account. If your facility is selling t-shirts or treats and a family would like to purchase them, you can add these account receivables to the family's account. So when the family pays for their tuition, they can also pay for these account receivables. And on the parents' billing statements, they can see exactly what they are getting charged for. Next, under configuration and account category, we will cover revenue. Here we have a few default forms of revenue. So any income you make can be listed as tuition and fees, POS, which stands for point of sales, such as t-shirts, treats, and other merchandise. If you wish, you can add more forms of income to the list. All of the fields of account category will be better understood when we actually use them under the accounts tab, which will be covered in Cake Desktop's account video tutorial. If you have any problems, comments, or concerns, please visit our support page and view our frequently asked question or discussion panel. If you are still having problems, have a question, or would like to provide feedback, please email us and our tech team will respond within 24 hours. We would like to thank you for watching this video and we hope this video helps. Cake, it's not about what we do, it's about what you don't have to.